So I finally completed a milestone of mine, which means I'm excited to introduce everyone to my sketchbook tour. I had this Paul Rubens watercolour sketchbook from December 2020 where I received it as a present and it is now been a year and a half on and off of completing it. This sketchbook is bound uh, in a pad so you have to separate each of the pages with a ruler uh, and I really like the size. It was basically big enough for me to have treated each of these as a painting but it could also be divided into half for studies. This was not a particularly friendly notepad for ripping pages out in the middle because you would therefore separate all of the preceding pages from the rest of the notebook but I found that I could keep them pretty well in the sketchbook once the elastic was on. I divided this paper into half for some lighting studies and I really liked this one that I got from a frame in one of Yuzu's commercials. Uh, a little bit more from Tianguan Sifu and Xielian and then this was the fabled Super Slam commemorative painting that I made into a sticker. It's probably a good idea here to show you a bit of a close-up of the paper. It is hot pressed watercolour but it is a little less woven than a standard cotton pad and I really like the texture. It wasn't particularly noticeable but it did give a little bit of subtle texture um, so it is a good medium to sketch on without being really guided or influenced by the paper itself. This painting of Xiaoyu was the first time that I used gold leaf on my works and you can see some more experiments here because I think this was when I bought the glue for my gold leaf and this was also my first experiment with my Gansai Tanbi palette which I'll go into a little bit later. The size of this notebook uh, made it less intimidating to start a proper painting um, but also I think made it a little difficult to treat as just a sketchbook because the paper was pretty good quality so I didn't do a lot of random experiments here but I would say that this set of Satoko and Mai is probably one of my favourites just because I was a lot looser with the colours and I was just really feeling it that day. Um, not sure how to replicate this effect to be very honest. I would say that the attempts following on from these are not particularly successful attempts at replicating the same effect. I think it's tricky with portraiture because you are trying to chase resemblance and so as you can see with the face in Harani Nare uh, it was really tempting to kind of go back over and over again until it felt a bit more correct but where I really liked the painting there was actually the hands. And similarly with this Sui Han painting I thought Han Tong's rendering was really good but Lin Jing's face gave me a lot of grief so you can see clearly how much it's been reworked as opposed to the more intuitive um, brush strokes at the beginning. So I think the rendering style can really differ depending on which you want to go for but it is just about more practice and finding things that you like about the approach and replicating it like the hand in that Tenchi portrait. I'll come back to this Rika portrait because I've actually recorded the whole process of me painting her so it's um, definitely one of the more detailed processes that I have. This painting was actually done using Sumi Air ink and I find that when I'm feeling stuck or art blocked, keeping things black and white feels a lot less intimidating and reduces the barrier to entry so you just don't have to think so hard about every single aspect. This was a commission I did for Yuzu's birthday, um, just a really soft and gentle piece um, which was comparatively a lot easier to sketch and render. And then more experiments, this time with background washes and trying to build off um, an existing background. Backgrounds are definitely my weakness, as you can see with all of the paintings here. 
but again, things to work on for my next sketchbook. So my main palette is the Winsor & Newton Professional Travel Watercolour Set. I've hit pan on white pretty unexpectedly, um, but it is a really good way of tempering the brightness of all the other colours. So this palette's two years old and it's still got plenty of life left in it. I combined that with my Gunsai Tanbi palette, which is somewhere between a gouache and a watercolour. It's more opaque than watercolour, which allows me to correct any mistakes on lighter colours, but not as opaque as a gouache. I primarily use the skin tones and also the pinks and the purples for my portrait work, um, but it is really nice as a complement to my Winsor & Newton watercolours. And then we'll proceed with some Q&As while I show you a sped up version of me painting this Rika portrait. As you can see, Yuzuru Hanyu is pretty overrepresented in the subject matter of my sketchbook, and that is because I consider him one of my muses. Um, I've thought that ever since I discovered his skating in 2016, early 2017, and he's just never fail to give me inspiration. There's just such a wealth of beautiful reference images, um, beautiful photography that is taken of him all the time. And I find that when it comes to sketches and practicing drawing and art, the main thing is just finding ways to reduce that barrier to entry for yourself, like that mental or emotional block that makes it difficult to start a painting. And I think when you have a muse, it's always a really reliable subject when you can't think of anything else to paint, um, just to sort of get you going. And so it's a really positive cycle. I enjoy looking at reference photos of Yuzu and I enjoy trying to capture it. I've been drawing pretty much as long as I remember. One of my favourite activities as a kid was to just get like printed paper from my parents' study and sit there and just cover pages upon pages with comics and sketches and stories. So yeah, it's always been part of my life and I studied art history in high school and did a lot of you know painting and experimenting with a bunch of different mediums so I guess that also leads into my favorite method of drawing something. Um, I have studied oil painting, I've worked with soft pastels and charcoal as well in the past but I would say that when it comes to traditional media um, watercolor is definitely my favorite medium. It's just again makes it so much easier to paint when the only thing you really need is water and pigment and you don't need an elaborate easel set up, you don't need canvases, um, you just need a pad and basically some brushes. So I find it really relaxing, it's a pretty clean medium as well, so there's no danger of breathing in too many paint fumes. In terms of my favourite costume to paint, um, that's really hard. I really like figure skating in part because of its beautiful costumes um, and I try and do a variety of costumes to paint to be very honest. So I don't know if I have a favourite, I guess it would probably be Requiem or like Seme or something, it sort of depends. I think Seme is probably easiest to capture and get right because it's so instantly recognisable. Um, but Requiem is very rewarding when you can get it right. And I think that also leads me into the next question about the hardest costume to paint. Um, again, I think it depends on how accurately you want to render something. Uh, I would say that Requiem is definitely one of the most difficult costumes I've tried to seriously paint and capture because there's just so much going on and it's so intricate and gorgeous if you study it up close. Um, but again, equally very, very difficult to render correctly. Um, I would also say that Tento Chito's um, costume is also really difficult, probably because of the fact that the 
base fabric being light blue and the embroidery being light as well um, makes it really difficult to capture in traditional media because you can't create the same layers that you would be able to um, on a digital canvas or on an iPad. And that is it. Thank you all so much for the interesting questions that you've sent in. It was really fun to answer and dissect a little bit of my own creative process. And thank you all for looking at the sketchbook tour. If you have any further ideas or things you want to see in terms of art content, I would love to read them in the comments. Um, but thank you all so much and I'll see you in my next video. Bye!